If you'd like to learn more about how to isolate colors using Adobe Lightroom, then stay tuned. This video is for you. After posting a handful of images on Instagram showing isolated colors, I received a lot of questions about how it's done. Now I posted a video in the past, and I'll put that link in the description below, that demonstrates a feature that's found on some Nikon cameras, like this one right here. This is the Nikon D3400. Now this feature allows the photographer to isolate colors in the camera body itself. Now I recognize that not everyone has a camera body that offers that same feature. And as many of you know, I shoot in RAW. And that means that I post-process. And when I post-process, I like to do so using Adobe Lightroom. Now Lightroom is very powerful and I've got a handful of videos where I showcase various features in Lightroom. And I'm going to post those in the description below as well. So if you're not familiar with Lightroom, take a look in the description, look at some of those videos. I think it'll help you out. Now I want you to keep in mind, it's not that you need to go out and get the latest version of Adobe Lightroom. You can, and there's a lot of cool features in it, but I use a much older version. Those features that were still prominent many years ago are still of value today. And one of those allows you to isolate colors. Now, I'm going to level set like I do with my other videos. It's a Saturday and it's cold outside, so I thought I'd take a little time here and show you how this is done. Now, I'm sitting in front of my machine. You can't see the machine yet, but it's right in front of me. And I found a picture that I took about a year ago. It's got some good colors in it, and I think it's going to make for a good demonstration. So with all that said, let's go ahead, jump right in. I'm going to show you exactly how I handle this. This image was taken during a portrait shoot uh, a while back, and I really think that this image will make for a good example of how we can isolate colors. Now, I have already modified this image to some extent. Um, I've already enhanced the colors a bit, applied some sharpness, and just did a few other things to it. Um, and again, I'm really just going to focus on how we can isolate the colors for now. So as we look at Lightroom, um, if you're not familiar with it, again, take a look at some of the videos in the description below, and I get into that uh, in a little more detail. But what I have laid out right now is I'm in the development module, which you can see right here. And on the right hand side, these are going to be the tools that we're going to work with. And rather than jumping into each one of these and what they do, what I'm going to focus on is this one right here. It's just this band. This band is the hue, saturation, and luminance band. And what we're really going to focus on within this band is just the saturation. Now saturation allows us to apply as much or as little color as we want within the given categories we have right here. So we have red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. So within these color groups, we can do whatever we want to do here. Now, as I look at this image, I kind of think, what would I want to do? And again, this is a personal preference. And what I'm really thinking to do here is to try and grayscale her skin tone. And then I want to enhance some of the reds and the magentas because I like to see the fingernails stand out and perhaps uh, the lips stand out. And then again, the skin tone will be more black and white and the hair can kind of lose color as well. And let's just see what it looks like. So that's kind of what I'm thinking as we get into this. And um, anytime you, you get into things like this, you just need to play with it. And the end result might be a little different than what you originally thought. So with that said, I'm just gonna start playing with some of the slider bars here. And I'm gonna start off with red. Now as I slide the red over, you can kind of see the impact is right here on the lips and a little bit here on the ear. I'll pull that back, it grayscales it. So um, I'm going to run this up just a little bit. And let's go with uh, about 82. I kind of like that. And we're going to take a look at orange here. Now, the skin tone is made of orange and yellow. And you can see as we slide this bar around the impact it has on the skin tone itself. So I'm going to drag this all the way to the left and pull the orange out of this image. I'm going to do the same thing with yellow and you can see how it makes these uh, fingernails pop. I kind of like the look of that right there. And I kind of like the way this is looking up here as well. So we're going to step down to green. Now if we pull green out, what does this do for us? We can enhance it. 
What this tells me is the grate that she's laying on doesn't have a whole lot of green in it. I guess it's more aqua. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the green down because I don't feel we really need it. And with aqua, if I pull the aqua down, you can see what that does. We start approaching almost a grayscale to this image. And in fact, I think I'm kind of liking this actually. And I kind of like the way this is looking because it's making the other items here stand out. Now our blues, you can see that the dress definitely has some blue in it. If we pull the blue all the way down, this turns black and white. I'm not really liking the way that looks. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. And let's take a look at the purple. So the purple, it looks like it's impacting the glass. Take a look right here. I'm going to pull it all the way down. It pulls whatever purple that's in that lens out. Crank it up and we get a little more in there. I kind of like to enhance the purple a bit. I think I'm going to run right around 51 on the slider. Then we have magenta. And magenta looks like it's impacting the lips as well and the fingernails, so I kind of like that. You can kind of see how that's coming into play here. I think the image is really kind of starting to pop. I'm going to back this off just a little bit. And I kind of like the way this is looking. So we do have a couple of issues here. Uh, we got a little bit of red right here. We got a little bit of green and blue up here in the hair. And then we have a little bit on her cheeks, the ear, the arm. So how do we fix this? Well, I'm going to use the adjustment brush, which is right here. Now this adjustment brush allows us to target certain areas. And what I've done here is you can see I have the slider for saturation. I pull it all the way down and that's going to impact wherever I brush. Now you'll also notice the flow is set to 50. You can bump this up. Um, you know, you can, you can modify these things in different ways. I kind of like to leave my flow down just a little bit. Uh, you also have feather. So feather, if you look at this, it looks like a donut. And you see how you have the outer side of the donut, almost like a car tire? Well, if I take feather and I move this to the left, it shrinks it down. If I move it to the right, it increases it. Now that's the amount of feather that is applied. So if we get to um, you know, a more defined portion of the image, it will feather into it rather than make it such a, uh, such a cut point. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and just left click and I'm gonna start painting this. And I'm just going over it because again, our flow is at 55%, so we're not sitting there at 100. All I really want to do is pull the color away from other parts of the image. So I'm just hitting this up and you can kind of see the grate here. So the grate has a little bit of blue in it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit this up as well. And we're just making all of that sort of a black and white. We're just pulling color out. That's all we're doing here. And with the hair right here, it's kind of the same situation. I'm rolling it back. I'm rolling. Up. I've got a, um, a little flywheel on the mouse, and that's all I'm doing to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit this up, and you can see all the reds coming out. And I want to do the same thing for the ear, which is right here. I'm going to grab that. There you go. We've got a little bit left, and I'm going to show you how we can um, we can completely get rid of that color in just a minute. Just stay with me though, and I'm going to finish this up real quick. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take care of the arm right there. And again, the color is coming out. And there you go. And let's do this part of the arm up here. All right. So I kind of like the way this is looking. The dress is standing out. Yeah, the lips and the fingernails are all standing out. Uh, we need to zoom in here. Actually, I can just get it like this. I'm going to go ahead and hit this up real quick. There you go, so that cheek is good. And then we got this little cheek right here to take care of. So I'm just hitting that up. There we go. Okay, so I like this. This is um, it's starting to look good. This is, uh, again, it's just personal preference. What I can do is you can see every place I've highlighted. Now I can right click on this and duplicate. And what this is gonna do is really um, if we missed any sort of area or you know, we just need a little stronger application to it It's gonna lay it right over the top now any uh, color is definitely pulled out and This image right here. I'm really liking the way this is looking um, The only thing I think I'm gonna do here is modify the crop a bit I want to pull my right side in a little bit Maybe the left side in just a tad and then I'll have the resulting image You can see I've already cropped a little bit, but let's go ahead and crop a little bit more 
And again, you can see with the rule of thirds right here, I have the eyes right on the right third, and I kind of like the way that's laid out. Uh, the hands can come down a little bit, pull this back just a little bit. And this is letting the viewers see that the hair is, is really this long, how it comes out. And I think that right there is good. Post-processing is an important part of the overall composition of an image, in my opinion. Now, as a photographer, you can do as little or as much as you want. And as you can see here, we use post-processing just to isolate colors in an image. But I plan to create some additional videos on some techniques that I use to try and make those images pop and bring some additional creativity to that image. Now, keeping in mind, it's really up to the photographer on how much they want to bring in. So there is no one right way to do it. It's just trying to understand some of the techniques and then apply your own creative flair to it. So with that said, I want to talk for just a minute about reviewing images. Many of you have asked me if I wouldn't mind providing some feedback and some critique on your images. I'd be glad to help you out. So what's the best way to do that? Well, I've been given this a little thought and I feel that we can use Instagram. So if you have Instagram, you want to post your image, go ahead and post it, then hashtag it with real world pics. That's real world, all run together, followed by pics, P-I-C-T-S. Now that happens to be my account name as well. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm going to post that link in the description below. So go ahead and follow me over there as well. If you got any questions, be sure to post them in the comments below. And as always, I'll do my best to help you out. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.